Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This lesson is going to be another in the series for cost estimation for chemical engineering. We are looking at chapter seven, and this is going to be uh, looking at when we have both changes in size and changes in time. So a quick review, if we had the cost of an item with a different size, we could use this formula where n is some number that we can look up, and if you don't have data, then you're going to just use 0 0.6 for n, and we can use this to adjust for size. For time, if we purchase something, you know, not recently, but you know, a fairly decent time back, then we can use this much simpler formula, but we need to find the cost index that's appropriate for our industry. What we want to do in this example is look at what if we have something where the data changes both size and time. And so, in this particular case, we have a heat exchanger, an air-cooled heat exchanger, purchased in 1990, and another one in 2006. The first one was 70 square meters. The second one was 130 square meters. Today, I want to buy one that's 100 square meters. The values for the chemical engineering uh, process cost index is going to be, or is given here for each one of those years, and the costs are given here. Now, the first thing that I recommend doing is always immediately begin by converting everything to today's costs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this number and I'm gonna multiply by 541.7 and divide by this 358. So the cost of this item in today's dollars is 25723 and 18 cents. For the 2006 model, I'm going to again multiply by 541.7, divide by 499.6, and so in today's dollars, this would be $36,865 and 9 cents. Now then, I'm going to adjust for the time. Now we have data for N for a shell and tube heat exchanger, but this is an air-cooled exchanger, which is a little bit different. So let's see if we can determine what N should be using algebra. If you take the equation, you can take the log of both sides and using laws of logarithms, get this formula. We have C sub A, I'll use that as a 36,865, and the price, or excuse me, the size on that one was 130 square meters. And the second one, the cost was 25,000. Again, I'm working with today's dollars. This only works if you are using all of them for the same time. And the size was 70. And solving this in is 0 0.58134. Now I can use this with either C sub A or C sub B to get the cost of the new one. So using what I've designated as A, the size I want is 100, the size I start with was 130, N is 0 0.58134. And so I end up with a cost of 31650.0801. And again, round. And so giving, 
One more significant figure than is really appropriate, $31,700. And I would trim this back to two significant figures when I go to my final answer. So this adjusts for size and time. There's one last piece that we want to discuss, and that is location. So you're going to do these problems just like you would a cost index, but you need to know sort of a location factor. <clears throat> and so we have some data here, okay, for a few years, okay, for some countries, not all of them. And this would give you something that would be pretty rough. Now, if you're doing this, you're not going to be like, over by 40 percent you're probably going to be over by like 60 percent at this point if you want to do a better job you're going to actually need to get better cost data from the location where you are going to be purchasing <clears throat> so this concludes this video lesson and in the next one we're going to be <clears throat> looking at what if i don't have data how else am I going to be able to come up with cost estimates? And we're going to need to look at, wait, this is just for the equipment. I want to be able to install this equipment. How much more do I need to include to be able to install our equipment? So those will be in the upcoming lessons. I thank you very much for your time.